Biology, uh, sorry, BS Human Biology from the De La Salle University, Manila, and got his doctor's degree from the De La Salle Health Sciences Institute. He completed his specialization in psychiatry at the Department of Neurosciences, Section of Psychiatry of the Makati Medical Center, where he served as the chief resident in his senior year. He currently holds clinic in Makati, and is a psychiatry consultant of the Child Fund Possibility Psychosocial Services Makati branch. So without further ado, let me give to you the speaker for this morning, Dr. David Raymond Valgarama. Okay, so good, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'll be talking about mental health in this pandemic. Um, hopefully, lang, uh, my internet will keep up with me. So before I start, I'd like to share this quote with you. It's a quote that I share before my talks usually. So be kind. Everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle you know nothing about. So I'll be talking about these topics. So our current problem, possible mental health issues, how we can mitigate the negative effects of crisis, how we could help others, and when to seek professional help. <clears throat> so before I go to my first point, I'd like to define first what mental health is, or specifically what uh, being mentally healthy is. So mental health, according to the WHO, is defined as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her, or her own potential, can cope with normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and able to make contributions to his or her community. Okay, so I underlined uh, the word normal, okay, normal stresses of life, because sometimes there are stresses of the encounter that are more than we can handle. Okay, so the, which takes me to our situation. So I think you will all agree with me that we are in extraordinary times now. I mean, for the past several months. For the past several decades, this, is, I think, is the first crisis that has affected the whole world, not just uh, a few countries. And if my guess is correct, um, especially correct me for those with more experience than me, but I think the last one was World War II. Okay. So our current situation, this was taken yesterday at around 4 p.m. So we now have around uh, more than 5,000 cases in the Philippines. But thankfully, our recoveries already have overtaken the number of deaths in the country. So uh, that's 435 versus 362. Okay, so the, uh, there are several factors from this pandemic that are causing distress. And some of the, um, the most common are as follows. So the first one, of course, is fear of the illness for ourselves and for others. There is isolation and change of our routines. There's also financial problems brought about by the slow drain of our finances, coupled with um, either a pause from work or even losing our jobs. There's also the loss of somebody significant, but it's not limited to a person only. At the moment, uh, this moment, we are also losing our freedom. Okay, there's also political issues. I don't think I need to expound on this one. And of course, there's uncertainty of the future. We don't know when this uh, quarantine would end. We don't know when the world will be able to fight off the disease. <clears throat> okay, but the bottom line is, okay, and all these factors boil down to stress. For some, it feels sudden and heavy, especially for those who have suddenly lost someone or th something. For others, it feels insidious, oppressive, and draining. In both instances, our minds may lose the will to ward off psychological problems. And especially for those who have previous diagnosis, it would be a little bit more harder for them to, to cope with. And speaking of the psychological problems, so I'll be talking about the, these four. Okay, so these four are, um, <clears throat> as I've seen, are the more common problems that people might encounter these days. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be trying to, to explain these problems as less technical as I can. 
Okay, pero if you have uh, questions about it, feel free to jot down your notes and then ask me after the session. Okay, so we'll go to the first one. Okay, so adjustment problems or in DSM na criteria, we call it an adjustment disorder. So this is usually the diagnosis we give, um, the acute diagnosis we give to somebody who has just developed uh, psychological problems uh, depending on the stressor that has come out. So they can develop emotional or behavioral symptoms that can range from um, depression to anxiety. The behavioral uh, uh, problems may be uh, violence, irritability, even suicide. Okay, but the difference here lang is the distress is out of proportion to the severity of the stressor. And because of the distress, uh, functionality is impaired. Okay, so uh, most diagnosis in psychiatry and psychology have time, uh, timelines that we have to meet. Like, for example, depression needs at least two weeks of the symptoms for anxiety, six months. So if ever the time um, criteria has not, the criterion has not yet been fulfilled, we usually, usually place it as an adjustment problem initially. Okay. So the second one is anxiety. So I think a lot of people are feeling this these days. So anxiety, I just like to clarify that this is different from being nervous. Being nervous is a natural response to a single um, stressor. Like for example, talking in front of a huge crowd. <clears throat> okay? But anxiety is a deeper form of nervousness. So in anxiety, you worry too much about a variety of reasons, not just one reason. Okay? And it is persistent and very hard to control. And because of the worry, functionality is hampered. So anxiety has several associated symptoms, okay? And I think the most common here, which I underlined, is overthinking. You tend to overthink a lot, usually about the future, and usually about the worst cases. And because of the speed of thoughts and the amount of thoughts that come in, people are usually on edge, and then they become irritable, okay? The thoughts all and people from sleeping at night. Then it, you, uh, p uh, people with anxiety usually have physical manifestations also. Just to name a few are headache, chest pain, uh, loose bowel movements, and they feel like they've lost energy. They don't have the will to move. So the second one, uh, the third one is depression. Okay, so like anxiety is different from nervousness, depression is different from sadness. So uh, depression is a persistent and heavy sadness in which you may or may not lose interest in activities that you used to enjoy. Um, in technical terms, the loss of interest, we call this as anhedonia. And it's actually the pillar of depression which creates, uh, which uh, gives rise to the silent depression. So in cases like uh, Robin Williams or Kate Spade or Anthony Bourdain. Okay, and these symptoms can lead to a series of emotional and physical problems and later on can decrease functionality as well. So when I say persistent, uh, the criteria for depression dictates that it has to be present almost every day for at least two weeks for it to be diagnosed as such. Okay, so the associated symptoms of depression are as follows. So number one is changes in our weight it's either we lose or we gain weight, okay? For those who gain weight, they, uh, it's stress eating. So you eat so much just to counteract the effects of stress in your body, or you don't eat at all, okay? Sleep can also be affected. It can be too little or too much sleep. Too little sleep is around three hours to none at all. Too much sleep is more than 10 hours per night. But the common thing about both types of sleep is that even if you sleep for 10 to 12 hours at night, when you wake up in the morning, you feel like you, you haven't even slept at all, okay? Which gives rise to the next symptom, which is fatigue or loss of energy, okay? People may see you as sluggish, and you also could be irritable, okay? And then in later stages of the depression, you start feeling worthless. And then they may, there may be instances wherein you uh, accuse yourself of doing something when actually it's not true. So there's excessive guilt. 
And too much of that can later on lead to the recurrent thoughts of death, suicidal plans, or an, an actual suicidal act. And with all, uh, all this considered, there's also a difficulty to concentrate or make decisions. The fourth one I included because there are people, a lot of people will be losing something. The thing about grief is it's not only a loss of somebody. It's not only a loss of a person. Okay? Uh, grief is a loss of anything, actually. So, for example, it's a death, an end of a relationship job loss, a loss of material possessions, and a loss of freedom. And interestingly enough, somebody from the Child Fam uh, chat group sent uh, an article yesterday which says that everything we've been feeling these days, you know, the, uh, the anxiety, the, uh, <clears throat> the uncomfortable feeling, is actually grief. You know, we've, we've been losing a lot of things. So for example, you know, we lost our freedom, especially now because of the lockdown. Some people lost their jobs and then a lot of people also have lost somebody dear to them okay so what are the symptoms of grief no, there aren't actually uh, a fixed criteria for the symptoms of grief grief can present with a lot uh, of symptoms so for example anger depression anxiety symptoms of trauma okay but the severity is affected by two things the nature of the loss, if it's sudden or gradual, if it's expected or unexpected, and the person's resilience. Okay? Pero, uh, because people who have experienced something bad in the past have usually, are usually developing some resistance to further stressors in life. Okay? And grief in itself, it's a process. It's dictated by time. Diba sabi nila, time heals all wounds. Pero it depends, no? Um, it's dictated by time and could last several months to a year or more, or even never, especially in terms of losing somebody very significant, like a husband, a wife, or a parent. <clears throat> okay, so before I move on to our next point, no, I'd just like to remind for those people already seeing a counselor, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist, please keep in touch with them, especially if they offer online or virtual consultations. If not, it's very much okay to look for those that do and maybe stick with them temporarily. And when the lockdown or the quarantine ends, it's your choice to stay with them or to go back to your previous na professional. Okay? And for those on medications, please remain adherent to them based on your psychiatrist's instructions. Okay, so the next one, no, this will be the bulk, actually, of my discussion. Uh, a little warning, lang, it might be overwhelming since I've pulled around 20 points here, <clears throat> 20 advices, okay? So I've taken this from different sources and I pulled it all together. Um, just a reminder, these are not hard and fast rules, okay? So some of this might work for others and some might not. So what you do is just you pick those that work for you. And another thing, I've underlined also some important things here that might be beneficial to a, lot, to a lot more people. So let's get on with this. So the first one, okay, number one is stick to a routine. So these days, ever since the lockdown ended, we've been staying at home. So a lot of people would be um, feeling guilty na hindi naging productive. Okay, so and then some might feel lost. Some might feel na anong gagawin ko sunod. So nakatungangan na sa bahay, nanood na ng TV, wala na ginagawa. So to be able to counteract the effects of that, okay, so create a routine for yourself. For example, wake up at a certain time each day and then uh, plan your day accordingly. But give yourself a little leeway naman to change plans. <clears throat> okay? And then uh, sleep, if possible, sleep at a, a certain time each night. Okay? The second one is take care of your body. Hindi lang dahil nasa bahay lang tayo ngayon, na wala tayong ginagawa, we don't meet anybody from the outside, uh, we don't meet our bosses, hindi na natin nakikita significant others natin, na hindi ka na nag-aalaga ng sarili mo. Okay? So when you wake up, brush your teeth, um, comb your hair, wash your face, take a bath, and so on and so forth. Kung may skincare routine ka, go ahead with them. 
Okay, don't stop. And dress in comfortable clothes while you're at home. Wag lang, wag mong gamitin the same clothes day in and day out for like three to four days straight. Okay? The third one, uh, this may apply to only some, baka mahirapan iba, is get out at least once a day for at least 30 minutes, minutes each day. Okay, so for those living in houses with a backyard, a garden, or a lawn, get out. Use, use that space. For those naman na wala, if it's possible, maybe get outside your, the door of your house, outside the gate of your house, or maybe at the street kung papayag ang local government nyo. But please maintain physical distancing. Yun lang, be safe. Okay? Number four, exercise or find time to move. Okay, so I know I've, uh, I've been talking to a lot of people na naghihinayang kailan daw mag-open mga gym, etc. You don't need a gym to exercise. At most, if you want, you can go to YouTube, uh, look for home exercises that you can do, and just follow suit. Okay, I've also noted some friends na as a group, no, as a barkada, uh, they either do uh, FaceTime or Zoom. Tapos sabay-sabay sila nag-Zumba, nag-yoga, and whatnot. The fifth one is actually quite important, no? Uh, it's reach out to others at least once a day for at least 30 minutes. So let's say, for example, you live in a house with your family. Then reach out to your friends. Call somebody. The world is uh, smaller these days naman. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Skype, Zoom, and so on. Okay, so connect. Connect with them. Ask how they're doing, okay? And they, they'll do the same. At least may paglalabasan ka rin ng sama ng loob if kailangan. This is also important for those who are by themselves, na hindi nakakalabas. Let's say you're not one of those, uh, let's say you're in, on quarantine, or you're not, um, hindi ka pwede lumabas, wala kang, hindi ikaw ang nakapangalan sa, sa quarantine card. Then reach out to people. This is also very, very important for those who are in a household with nobody there na who can understand who can understand their feelings their emotions their thoughts let's say <clears throat> let's say um a daughter in a household where in the mother and the father are emotionally distant okay, let's say may marital problems sila lang din sa bahay no pag nilapitan siya ng daughter hindi na intindihan so nababaliwala ang feelings ng daughter okay so that daughter can actually call up other members of the family, or reach out to her friends. So number six, no, um, eat healthy and stay hydrated. A lot of people who are stressed these days tend to binge eat. No, like stress eating, bili na uh, order no order sa McDo, mag order sa Grab, sa Food Panda, la pupunta sa nearest grocery, bibili ng maraming chips and mga ganong snacks. Okay, so that is actually counterproductive. So as much as kaya, please eat uh, healthily. No? And of course, stay hydrated. This is also going to help you keep up your immune system. Okay, number seven, for those also na uh, gagana ito, try some mindfulness exercises. So for those who don't know what mindfulness exercises are, they are simply relaxing sensory stimulations. So, for example, you feel anxious, you feel stressed. Tapos, mahilig ka sa, let's say, music. Then, makinig ka sa music. For those naman na uh, mahilig sa, let's say, aromatherapy, then break out your oils. No? Mag, Magpa-diffuse ka. For those who are fond of art, then paint, draw, and whatever. Okay? And then, for those naman, let's say, who have pets at home, tapos nakaka-relax ang pets, then pick them up, play with them, okay? Tactile, visual, um, olfactory, auditory. Sige na, for those naman na kailangan na kailangan talaga, even, uh, let's say, chocolates will do for the gustatory senses. Kasi what this will do is that it will distract your thoughts. If you stimulate a sense no, and focus on those stimulations, it will distract your thoughts from thinking too far into the future, especially if it's negative. Okay? So number eight, oh well, I already mentioned pets kanina, but for those households with kids 
also use your kids to your advantage also. Play with them. They will appreciate it. And you yourself will find that it's relaxing. Okay. So number nine, I underline this because this is also very important, especially for those people living with others within the household during this quarantine. Each one of us will be affected a different way no, because of the lockdown. So, iba-iba ang maging reaction natin. Some people will become a little bit more clingy. Some would become a bit more irritating. Some would retreat no, to their personal spaces na ayaw magpagulo. Okay? Respect them. Okay? So, be patient with them. Na let's say, nainis ka na. Uh, or this person in the household is rubbing you off the wrong way. Then, put a little distance muna between the both of you. Okay, give them some birth. No? Hayaan natin sila. And then, if ever, remind them also to do the same with you in case nang you are the one who's getting stressed. Okay. Number 10, this is also, if it's possible, kung kaya, no? find and prepare a safe space at home. This could be as simple as a corner, which is yours. No? Uh, dress it with your favorite chair, with your favorite lamp, so whenever you feel stressed, uh, whenever you feel anxious, retreat to that space. No, makinig ka sa music, read a book, watch TV, watch Netflix while you're in that space. Okay. For those naman na let's say a bigger household, no, if you can spare yourself a small room, no walang gumagamit, then use that room. <clears throat> okay. Or for those let's say in a condominium na may uh, roof deck. Kung wala namang tao doon, use it. Go there. As long as pinapayagan ng admin. Okay? Number 11 is also very, very important. Okay? Because these times, lahat tayo nag assume ano, lahat tayo nag nagtatanong, ano na mangyayari? What will happen in the near future? Uh, when will the lockdown end? When will we beat this virus? Okay? So a lot of thoughts are out there. Okay? So, pero lower your expectations. No, don't think too far ahead. If you can, limit your thoughts to days or even if you can limit to just today. Okay, the only time that you think about the future is if you plan to go to, let's say, the grocery. Okay, so plan it out already. Those are the things that you plan out. The rest, hayaan mo na. Let it unfold. So the more we think about the future, especially if we see a bleak, dreary in the future, it will only cause us more anxiety, more stress. And for those with depression, it might, uh, it might heighten the depressive episode. Okay. So number 12, <clears throat> I don't know lang if kinakaya niyo to. Okay. But if you can, limit exposure to negative information. Uh, if you noticed, I did not specifically put COVID-related information. Okay, because it's not the only negative information floating around these days. So yes, there's the problem with the virus. But there's also a problem with the government. There's also negativity floating around in social media. Okay, so if any of these three, or even more than these three, affecting you, try to limit it. But still, no, be informed, especially when it comes to the government measures, mga laws, and whatnot. Pero limit it. Let's say, for example, like for example, ako, I stopped watching the news throughout the day. No? So, nililimit ko na lang pag umaga. When I wake up, I watch the news. When I got whatever I need to get, hindi na ako nanonood. Okay? This also goes the same with, let's say, Facebook, no? with Twitter. So maybe you can limit yourself to the less negative social media platforms like, I don't know, uh, Instagram. Okay. So number 13, notice the good happening around you, especially humor. Okay. Be grateful for those good things. It's focusing on the positivity and focusing on um, gratitude will actually train you to uh, train uh, to focus more on the positive rather than the negative. Okay. And then number 14, I underline this is because this is also important. Find something simple that you can control. Okay. The loss of freedom that we have. Okay. The loss of the job. Okay. The feeling of being not productive these days. These are actually that, that's causing us anxiety. These are actually because 
we feel like we have lost control over our own lives. We lose our sense of agency towards ourselves. So what you can do is you find things to control. This is uh, one thing you can actually do is create um, the routine. Okay, routine is a form of control for our lives. So when you wake up, fix the bed, clean your room, um, cook, ano pa ba, ano magagawa natin? reach out to others, um, repair something at home na natagal mo nang hindi na-repair, or maybe may isa kang closet na pinapasukan mo na ng gamit, hindi mo na naayos, ayusin mo na. Okay, this is the time to do it. <clears throat> okay, and then this will also reflect in number 15. Helping others, whatever means you can, however means you can, even as simple as ano ba, uh, giving food to somebody who needs it, this is actually a form of control in our lives. It gives us a, for, uh, a sense of agency. Okay? And it will also make you feel a little better with, with ourselves. Okay? So if you can, help others. Kung hindi ka makakalabas sa bahay mo and have the funds or the capacity to help financially, please do so. Okay? Number 16, engage in activities with repetitive movements. So example seto, well, example lang that I've read is knitting and sewing. But there are other things you can do. No, for example, kung uh, mahilig ka magluto, chopping vegetables, chopping things is actually a repetitive motion. So pwede siya, it's a good way to reduce anxiety. The repetitive movements kasi, it distracts us also. Okay, from our thoughts. So it calms us down. So, per let's, let's not limit ourselves to those. No? Maybe may mga lalaki dyan magsasabi na hindi naman namin ginagawa yan. So, for the guys, pottery, carpentry, no, those are repetitive in self. Uh, writing, drawing are also repetitive motions. Okay, so you can do those. Number 17, this is also important. Uh, if ever the other advices the other opinions here to reduce stress don't help uh, don't help you okay don't be embarrassed don't be shy to ask for help so call a friend no if it's just minimal pero kung medyo mabigat na na hindi mo na alam anong gagawin please contact a professional already there are a lot of hotlines floating around these days okay so the last slide dito are also very important number 18 Remind yourself that this is temporary. Okay, so we even fought off ilang plagues in centuries ago. Okay, so this will also pass. So just, ano, uh, you know, uh, your expectations of the future and remind yourself that this is temporary. Number 19, for those with religions, pray. Okay, uh, don't lose sight of your faith. <clears throat> it uh, it might not affect us directly, pero faith and hope can bring us further onwards. It can help reduce talaga the the ano, the anxiety, especially let's say for example for the Catholics, praying the rosary with the rosary beads is also a form of meditation. It's a repetitive motion. Okay, while you're praying by vocalizing or by thinking about it, you're moving your hands, you're touching the beads of the rosary. That is also Calming. And then the last one, na underline at na at naka bold, please see the learning from this situation. We are in, an, in a very adverse uh, situation these days. And adversity breeds resilience. What doesn't kill us makes us uh, better. Okay? So hopefully, the next time something difficult comes, mas kakayanin na natin to deal with them. Okay? So I'm sure may mga tanong pa kayo, please, pero please hold it na lang for the next, uh, for the question and answer portion. Okay, so a lot of you also might be asking, no, how do we help others? I've had patients asking me this already, no, especially within the home, na hindi tayo nakakalabas. So in your own capacity, how can you help? So actually, mas maliit na to, no? uh, It will mostly center kasi with yourself before you are able to help others. But what you can do initially is be informed. Know what to look for. Know what anxiety is. Know what depression is. Know what 
I know when somebody in the house in the home is having a difficult time. Okay, and then know what to do thereafter. So number two, for these people, especially for those na <clears throat> lalapit sa inyo or would re respond to your approach, okay, be mindful of their safety and dignity. Okay, assess if there's a risk, if they they pose a risk to hurting themselves or hurting others. Okay, so for example, it can go as simple as um, na babagot na sa bahay tapos sobrang kating-kating na lumabas and then nagpaplano na siya lumabas despite the local government saying na bawal talaga lumabas ng bahay. Okay, that is a risk to themselves. Okay, or say for example, um, a person who feels, uh, who's already diagnosed with depression feels so hopeless about the situation. Parang sasabihin niya na sa'yo na parang alam mo, buti na lang na uh, buti na lang siguro kung mawawala na ako dito ngayon. Buunahan ko na siya. That is a red flag signal already. So be mindful of those. Okay? And then, of course, be mindful of their dignity. Now, when you talk to them, respect. Respect their feelings. So I will be repeating myself na lang with regards to this later on. So number three, reach out. Okay? Reach out, especially if you've identified somebody who's um, on the brink of a psychological breakdown or obvious na stressed out na siya or obvious na na, let's say, hindi na sila ganun ka-functional, hindi na bumabango, hindi na naliligo, wala nang gana kumain, nahihirapan matu. Okay? Reach out. But when you reach out, first and foremost, communicate calmly. No? Huwag mong, huwag mong tanongin, no? ano nangyayari sa'yo? Okay? So calmly, tanong mo lang na, is there, is there a problem? Okay? And whenever, let's say, for example, they do open up, acknowledge their feelings without judgment. We will talk more about this later. Because acknowledging feelings, uh, uh, I mean, hindi mo in-acknowledge feelings sila and then you judge them, that is called invalidation. Okay? So number four, if ever, ito especially to, if ever they are not yet ready to open up, reassure them of your presence and your support. Tell them na, okay, I understand that you don't, uh, you're not yet ready to talk today, but know that I am here. Okay, I, uh, I am willing to talk to you whenever you're ready. So, as simple as that. Number five, of course, relay knowledge or remind them of how to reduce the effects of stress. Yun yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, the 20 points. Okay, uh, but please do not force them into it. Let's say, for example, um, ikaw, religious ka, siya, hindi masyado. Tapos, pinipilit mo, magdasal ka kasi, magdasal ka, nakakatulong yan. Okay, that would actually be, uh, would actually impose a little bit more stress on them. So, you go with whatever works for them. Then, if you don't know, then ask them, what helps you? What calms you down? Okay? And then, number six, I already mentioned this kanina, Take care of yourself before you take care of others. Kasi what more can you offer them if ikaw mismo, ubos ka na, wala ka na mamibigay. Okay? Uh, that would actually be counterproductive kasi pareho kayo apektado na din, uh, that time. Kung, let's say, exhausted ka na, physically, emotionally exhausted, and you still try to help somebody, you're pulling both of you no, down the drain. Okay, so kanina I talked about invalidation. So this is how not to invalidate somebody. So what can you say? What can you ask? Okay, so you can say about, let's say for example, um, I have been concerned about you. Did something happen that made you feel this way? How can I best help you right now? Okay, I'm here for you. And I understand that it must be hard for you. But these are all examples. Uh, if you notice sa uh, ilan to, one, two, three, four, five, sa limang to, all you did was to offer support. Okay? Wala kang binatong judgment. Wala kang, wala kang finors na advice or opinion on them. Okay? Which is contrary to this second one, what not to say. Okay? And sorry to say, I keep hearing this sa mga 
uh, mga ta- sa mga pasyente na nami-meet ko, no, people keep telling them this, these things eh. No, like for example, pag hindi na intindihan, no, it's all in your head. It's just a face. You'll get over it or even worse, no, what's wrong with you? So sa apat na to, um, what's common here is nag-judge ka na sa kanila. No, na may problema nga na may na sila ang may problema. No, eh, or nag ano ka na nag-impose ka na ng opinion mo na hindi pinagdaanan mo lang yan, you'll be okay bukas. Okay. So, please uh, be mindful then of what of how you talk to others, especially others who are sensitive these days. Okay. So, okay. When do you seek professional help? This is a very, very simple criteria. Okay. Number one is when you are in doubt, you know, when you are confused. Let's say, for example, sa yo, hindi mo na alam ano nararamdaman mo, pero you've noticed na hindi ka na bumabangon, hindi ka na nagtatrabaho, let's say, may online work ka, ayaw mo na magpakita online. Or let's say, may kasama ka sa bahay, ayaw mo na magpakita sa kanila. Ayaw mo na magsalita. Hindi ka na nakakatulog. Okay? Hindi ka na kumakain. Okay? So, pag hindi mo na alam anong gagawin next, please seek consult already. Or let's say, for example, for those naman uh, you're with at home or maybe a friend na napapansinan mo ng problems. Okay? If you don't know how to help them, if you don't know even as simple as you don't know what to say, it's better to say nothing at all. Okay? Sabihin mo na lang na I understand na nagkakaproblema ka. Please seek consult. Kung hindi nila alam saan, then help them look for somebody who can help them. Okay? Number two, when safety is at risk. No, so this, uh, the safety I mean is when there is a risk for harm to self or harm to others. Yung si binanggit ko kanina, you know, na let's say, nag, uh, nakikita mo, nagsusulat na siya na sana wala na ako dito, and so on and so forth. Or kung ikaw man sa sarili mo, uh, when your thoughts start becoming darker, na parang naisip mo na na ayoko na, yun pa lang, yung phrase na yun, ayoko na, yung statement na yun, okay, that is already a risk. So it's better not to deal with it yourself and to already seek professional help. Okay, wag lang kayo mahiya, please, to seek professional help. Okay, number three, I also mentioned this a while ago, when functionality is suffering persistently. Let's say, for example, um, uh, may work ka ngayon. So, parang wala kang gana ngayon. Sige, no, hinayaan mo. Tomorrow, wala ka pa rin gana, hindi ka napakita. The next day, same thing. So on and so forth. Until mapamansin mo na wala ka ng gana bumangon sa kama, uh, ayaw mo nakausap ang friends mo, workmates mo, pag nag-message or nag-call ang HR ang boss mo, pinapatya na, tayan mo na ng phone, okay, then that's a sign that your functionality is already suffering. Okay? Pero yun nga, it's as simple as functionality in daily life, like taking a bath, eating, no? uh, taking care of yourself. You know? Those functionalities are also part of this criterion. Okay? So I think uh, that's my last na lecture slide, learning slide. So before I end lang, I'd like to share two quotes that came from two of my mentors. This were taken three years apart. So these are Dr. Villasor and Dr. Balnaag. So Dr. Villasor, I learned from her in 2017, three years ago, in one of her lectures, that Filipinos are social people. We are very, very social people. Relationships for us heal. All else that we do only serve that purpose. And then, Dr. Cornelio Banaag mentioned a few days ago lang, talk to someone. If you trust someone, try to contact and talk to that person. It will help relieve some of that anxiety. Or talk to the hotline. Talk to somebody professionally prepared to listen. Okay? And with that, no, this too shall pass. And thank you very much for listening. So, can I call back ang host namin for the question and answer portion?
Ricardo. Hi. Hi, sir. Ang dami ko natutunan sa ano.